The Dark Souls series has a lot of freaky locations. Places like the Tomb of the Giants, the Black Gulch, the Dreg Heap. They're dark, they're creepy as hell, and you're gonna die in them. A lot. But we're not necessarily talking about places like that. Instead, we're looking at places that at first glance look pretty normal, but if you look deeper, well, I mean, it's Dark Souls. So it's misery, it's decay and darkness all the way down. These are 10 Dark Souls locations that are freakier than you thought. Starting off at number 10, Majula from Dark Souls 2. The main starting town in Dark Souls 2, it's actually one of the most idyllic locations in the entire series. This is where all the NPCs you meet throughout the game congregate and the place you have to come back to if you want to level up. There's even a talking cat. Seems pretty sweet, right? Just because... because I'm a cat? <laughs> There's a lot of pretty weird stuff going on in this town, though. That bottomless pit at the center being the most mysterious. I mean, eventually, you'll be able to go down there, and unsurprisingly, guess what? It's not good. There is one nasty surprise to find in the town, and it involves these things. They're called enslaved pigs, and they're a lot nastier than they look. They're tucked away to the side of the Majula Mansion, which has its own weird history, and they'll gang up on you and easily break your guard if you're unprepared for how aggressive they really can be. And these little guys don't screw around. You know, kill them 12 times, and then they'll be replaced by their bigger brothers, the undead boars. Kill those 12 times, and... Well, you might end up regretting it. Majula definitely is proving that even like the safe areas of Dark Souls aren't very safe. But over at number nine, let's talk about Dark Root Garden. It's an overgrown forest filled with some oddball plant creatures. This place, though dark, isn't terribly freaky unless you wander into a walled off section behind a door that requires a certain crest to open. Behind it, the area opens up significantly with a lot of ground to cover and a lot of directions to go. Now you might think it's safe-ish until you suddenly start taking damage out of nowhere. You panic and freak out, and now you're dead. What the hell is that? Well, there are regular enemies around to throw you off your guard, uh, but along with them are ghosts. These aren't just your regular normal ghosts though. No, that would be too easy. These ghosts are almost completely invisible, and you can't target them. This, of course, gives them a really big advantage if you know Dark Souls, even if you do know where they are. Really, they're hardly worth trying to take down, and they're not too hard to just run past, but that first time you enter the woods and they start coming at you? Yeah, that's pretty freaky. Next at number 8, we have Arithil of the Boreal Valley from Dark Souls 3. It's a real breath of fresh air when you come out of the catacombs of Karthus and arrive here in this sparkling city. No place in Dark Souls is free of enemies, but at least it's, you know, fairly bright and it's got a nice pretty view. But it's easy to get caught off guard by this place and let its outer veneer of beauty fool you because there's some weird stuff going on if you're looking for it. If instead of heading up the main path through the city, you take a detour into the moat below, you'll find whatever this thing is. It's called a sewer centipede and they're just real freaky. I mean, look at this thing. Do you really want to fight that? Keep going and you'll find the Erythial Dungeons where even more bizarre creatures wait in hiding because of course, Dark Souls. It's nice on the outside, but there's some nasty stuff hiding in the shadows. Next at number seven, we have Aldia's Keep from Dark Souls 2. Now Aldia, actually the older brother to King Vendrick, doesn't really seem like too important of a character in Dark Souls 2. He's barely ever mentioned while people go on and on and on about the king. Now of course, with the updated re-release of Scholar of the First Sin, Aldia suddenly became way more important. He's the ultimate secret final boss of the game and appears throughout as this bizarre flaming head thing. Now he wasn't always the monster you see him as now, and this area used to be his home. Filled with traps, weird experiments, rooms, and cages filled with monsters, this area doesn't seem so bad when you first approach it from the outside, but when you enter, oh well, yeah, that's the, the first thing you see is a shaking carriage, like something's gonna burst out of it and attack you at any moment, and of course, it's creepy and nothing happens. Then a giant dragon skeleton falls towards you, if you don't dodge it, it's an instant death. It's just crazy stuff. Further in, you'll find strange experimentation rooms and a hidden ritual chamber where Aldia apparently experimented in search of immortality and a way to recreate the ancient dragons. In that dragon thing, at least he was successful, considering the next area, the Dragon Airy, is swimming with the things. Basically, this place is the classic creepy mansion, but even knowing that going in, there's some pretty freaky surprises waiting for you. Now next over at number 6, we have the Great Hollow in Dark Souls. Found behind two layers of secrets, the interior of the Great Tree that you can pretty much see from 
everywhere doesn't seem so bad, outside of some pretty thin pathways you have to walk on. Now, as you're slowly making your way down the tree's interior, you're gonna start to notice something. These weird black lizard-looking things with giant eyes. I'm, of course, talking about the basilisks, and they can and totally will mess you up. There's actually two places these little jerks appear, here and in the sewers. And while they suck in both places, they're way worse here, where you're often trapped in tiny rooms uh, and on thin platforms. What makes these things so bad? One word curse. When the Blastalisks attack, it breeds a gas that causes curse buildup. If it builds up all the way, you die instantly. But that's not the worst part. When you come back, you'll find that your health has been cut in half and you've still got that curse status effect. Curing curse can only be done through a specific out of the way NPC or a rare expensive item, both of which you might not even know exist by the time you're first cursed. And even worse, at least in the original version of the game, the effects of the curse would stack making it so you could potentially be left with only one eighth of your total health. Yeah, that stuff's real nasty. Oh, and have you noticed something weird about these things? Those big orbs that look like their eyes aren't actually their eyes. Their actual eyes are these little tiny things closer to their mouth. So what are these things? Who knows, but it's just a weird little detail that people have noticed. They just had to put the worst possible enemies in the Great Hollow, but at least the place it leads to, Ash Lake, is actually fairly nice, if not a little creepy in its own way. So it's almost worth the trouble, almost. Now next at number 5, The Painted World of Ariandel from Dark Souls 3. Not to be confused with The Painted World of Ariamis from Dark Souls 1, which, while similar, is pretty straightforward in its freakiness. This painted world, at least at first, seems kind of normal. You know, there's Viking guys and wolves, but nothing really out of the ordinary. I mean, outside of this guy at the beginning who tells you to... Quick, go along. Find one for yourself. A sweetly rotting bed to lie upon. Which, yeah, that is a little bit of a strange opening phrase, but deeper in you'll come across this place, the Corvian Settlement, where these disgusting shriveled creatures can be found. The Corvian Settlers. They look a little like a, like a dead bird fetus that spit poison at you, and are generally just nasty and pathetic and disgusting. The larger enemies in the area, the Corvian Knights, seem intent on killing them on sight. The place is just grim overall. Even deeper, if you take a wrong turn, you might end up here, this blood-red nest swarming with disgusting fly monsters. Apparently, the painting is starting to rot, and these flies and the dying creatures earlier are just a manifestation of that rot. What starts out as a pretty normal area becomes increasingly upsetting as you go through it. But the truly freaky thing about this place? An absolutely brutal three-stage boss fight. That's just so wrong. But over at number four, of course you would know we were going to mention it, we have An Orlando from Dark Souls. When you get here, that's where you realize the scope of what's going on. The game tells you about Lord Gwyn and all that, but it's here where you realize, oh, he's not like King Arthur or something, he's more like Zeus. We're dealing with gods here. Uh, much like the home of the Greek gods, Mount Olympus, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the background of An Orlando. Your main contact in the area, Guinevere, daughter of Lord Gwyn, is basically the one that tells you what to do. But the weird thing is, is she's not actually real. Yeah, in a bizarre twist, the Guinevere you see in the main hall of Anorlando is just an illusion created by the only actual remaining god here, Gwendolyn. He's the oldest son of Gwyn, but is some kind of strange monster with tentacles coming out of his robes. You can find him in the hidden tomb of Gwyn beneath the main hall, and he'll attack you, of course, if you try to approach. I just want to emphasize that all of this is completely optional. It's very easy to go through the game not even realizing that the giant person who actually kind of explained what you're doing in this game wasn't actually there at all. Now, they're just a trick and you're being manipulated by this weird monster thing who, that's also a god. How are you being manipulated? For what reason? A and why? Who knows? But it's definitely freaky. Now down to the final three. At number three, we have the Ringed City from Dark Souls 3. It's basically the true final area of the Dark Souls series. The, the Ringing City is the home to the Pygmy Lords, the primordial humans and inheritors of the Dark Soul. So if that means absolutely nothing to you, then congratulations, you're normal. Basically, there is a thing called the Dark Soul there, and the series is called Dark Souls, so it's probably important, right? Well, that place is incredible looking, with one of the most impressive views in the whole series, and it's a real breath of fresh air after getting through the hellhole that is a drag heap. But with beauty, of course, comes danger in this series, and this place can be really nasty. Go a little bit of a ways into the area, and you'll run into uh, this bizarre locust-looking thing peeking out at you from a corner. You'll see a few of these guys around, babbling like crazy people, and always ending their sermons with all weird, creepy phrases. Fear not the dark, my friend and let the feast 
begin. So you'll follow the path lower, and you'll find this vast bog of black stuff. In it, the locust creatures don't talk to you, instead they just attack on sight. Apparently, these creatures are meant to, and I quote, beckon men to the dark with their sermons, but most of them are unable to think past their own stomachs. So there's that. Uh, get further into the city and you'll find Filianor, Gwyn's last daughter and the one who's protecting the city. Touch her and, well, actually she's, she's a desiccated corpse. The city has long been destroyed and the remaining pygmy lords are being eaten alive for their blood by a crazy man. Have I mentioned these games are bizarre? Now at number two, of course, we gotta talk about the Upper Cathedral Ward in Bloodborne. Bloodborne is way more of a horror game than any of the Dark Souls games. Uh, most of the areas are just straight up freaky and you know it, but one area in particular is a pretty big surprise the first time you get in there, and that's the Upper Cathedral Ward. You spend a large portion of the game in the standard Cathedral Ward, you know, fighting off those crazed church zealots, so you'd expect much of the same thing in the Upper Cathedral, you know, perhaps some grander architecture and enemies in fancier clothes, but... It's not quite like that, man. Instead, you find yourself in these dark, seemingly abandoned towers, finding numerous creepy-looking slug creatures in an area called the Choir. These are called Celestial Larvae, which, yeah, that doesn't sound great. And you can find a note that simply says, the sky and the cosmos are one. Did these people attempt to commune with the great old ones and become whatever this is? You can find a woman who's given birth to one of these nightmare things later on, which probably explains why the next area in the upper ward is called the orphanage. The whole thing is bizarre and disgusting, and I'm not even talking about what you can find in the deepest, most secret spot of the upper cathedral ward. It's certainly something. I could, I could definitely tell you that. But finally, down at number one, we have Maiden Astrea's boss room in Demon's Souls. Found in the Valley of Defilement, this whole place sucks. It's dark, it's filled with disgusting, weird, plague-infested monsters, and the rickety platforms you have to stand on are so easy to fall off of, either down bottomless pits or worse, back into the swamp below, where you'll be forced to wander around in pitch blackness in an attempt to find your way back up. This area is exactly as freaky as you might think. I mean, just look at it. It's a nasty bog with melty-faced monsters, but the boss of this area, well, they're pretty surprising. I'm talking about Maiden Astrea, a living saint who's traveled to this forsaken place to heal the sick. You'd think that from that description, she'd be some, like, of course, horrible, plague-gorged monstrosity, but she isn't. She's just normal, and she doesn't even try to fight you. Instead, she's defended by this guy, the knight, Garl Vinland, who also doesn't attack you on sight. Instead, he just plants himself in front of the narrow passage leading to Estrella and just puts up his shield. So basically, you're forced to be the aggressor here. You can't just walk away. The name of the game is Demon Souls. You gotta get those demon souls. And even though she looks and acts completely normal, she's got a demon soul, so she has gotta go. If and when you kill Vinland, she simply commits suicide when you approach her. Yikes. Congrats, hero. I just want to emphasize how weird this whole thing is. This is one of the powerful demon souls, one of the climactic bosses of the game, and it's just a woman sitting at the end of a hallway with a knight protecting her. Neither want to fight you, and neither are particularly difficult. It's a complete inversion of what you're expecting. You know, like a, like a big boss battle. This whole thing is unpleasant enough, but I've been avoiding the baby-sized elephant in the room. These bizarre enemies in the pool below, literally called plague babies. Look at these things. They rise up out of the pool of blood. When you kill Astrea, they disappear. So there may have been some sort of weird connection. The whole thing, them, this whole thing is, is probably one of the more bizarre things in the entire game, maybe in the series. When you look at the description of her demon soul, it's described as the most impure, leaving us to wonder what exactly was going on with her. We may never know, but Maiden Astrea remains one of the most mysterious, surprising, and, and gross in a weird way bosses in video game history. But of course, we're talking about Dark Souls locations here, some that were freakier than you first would think. We kind of wanted to think deep on this one, so we want to hear from you guys down in the comments. Do you have any Dark Souls, Soulsborne, any type locations that seemed safe or seemed fine and everything was good, yada, 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 until you actually read into the lore or looked around more and realized how unsettling everything was? Let's talk about anything Dark Souls down in the comments. We love talking about it. If you enjoyed this video, maybe learn something, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.